Newsflash. I have to talk about Little Town Road again. This is not okay. This shouldn't be allowed. In fact, popular music should just sue this song. This song should not even be here. I don't... This song! Why is it here? Listen to me. This song, the number one song in the country, for 12 weeks, 12 weeks, is a two minute novelty song about riding a horse that uses a Nine Inch Nails Dark Ambient sample that has a no name rapper on it, rapping, singing about being a cowboy, featuring a one-hit wonder country artist from 25 years ago. And this song has been number one for 12 weeks. Why? Now, before I get into it, I'm not saying this is a bad song. In fact, I think it's a fluke in the sense of this works way better than it actually should be. This is the best blend of country and hip-hop I've ever heard, I'll say that for sure. All the times country tried to implement hip-hop into their music, it just was crappy. This time, hip-hop is trying to implement country, and honestly, it kind of works better. Now, the song itself is fine, I actually like it, but... Why this? It doesn't make any sense! I, I know it sounds... I know I sound like a contrarian or something, but... I know I spent the last episode talking about Bad Guy and why that song is, um... Why that song is number two, and... This makes even less sense than Bad Guy. I mean, this has a massive streaming presence. It makes logical sense as to why it's here, but how? Why does this song have such a massive streaming presence? Why aren't people sick of it yet? Most novelty or meme songs hit the charts for a, few, for a couple weeks and then fall off completely. I mean, I know Watch Me was a big hit, but that didn't hit number one. I mean, Juju on the Beat didn't hit number one. And, uh... Here's the other thing. Most of these songs sucked. Like, most of those novelty Vine songs that did not hit number one, most of them absolutely suck. And Gucci Gang only got to number three. When was the last time we had a meme song go to number one? I can't think of the last time, honestly. I, I mean, song, I mean, I guess. Oh. That was the last time we had a meme song go to number one. But look, that made sense. It wasn't just a meme song. It was a meme song by Drake, who was already knocking number one hits and had a huge freaking album that year. But why? But I mean, I barely consider that a meme song. I know it was used in a meme, but I would say the song would still do well on its own because, you know, Drake, I mean, it would do well on its own. So why this? All right. Speaking of Drake, okay, so the biggest song of last year was God's Plan by Drake, and this song was number one for 11 weeks. What I'm trying to say here is that this song was the most successful song of last year, and it reached number one for 12 weeks. 11 weeks. I think you know where I'm going with this. Well, the song feels fast in comparison. This song has a very good shot at being the most successful song of the year. If it keeps up the momentum it has, and I don't see it losing it anytime soon. It also has a good shot at breaking Mariah Carey's record, which is tied with uh, the Despacito record. And I remember that race in 2017. That was one of the first times I really paid attention to the charts and the Despacito record, and uh, that was... It tied one sweet day, but then Taylor Swift happened, and look what you made me do was the biggest song in the country. It only had three weeks before people realized it sucked, but yeah, Taylor Swift had a song hit number one. Taylor Swift has now been chart-blocked twice by this song. 
I would understand if it was, like, Drake or someone. I would understand Taylor Swift getting chart blocked by, I don't know, Drake or Cardi B or someone, but... And I'm not saying I would necessarily like it, but I'm saying I would understand it. Now, while well, Me was kind of a garbage song, and I'm not sure where You Need to Calm Down has landed yet, it's... I do prefer that to me. I have to say, I'm... Drake also had songs this week that debuted in the top ten. Why are... I mean, is the era of Drake finally over? But I mean, this is still a trap song. That's the other thing. Seven Rings was also still a trap song, but they were weird and different trap songs. This is a trap song about being a cowboy. Seven Rings is a regular trap song about riches, but it's being sung by a pop singer. What is going on with music? I do not understand. So, taking all that aside for a second, is the song any good? Yeah, I think so. It works in a way it really shouldn't. I will admit, I really like the sparse instrumentation. It's used to its advantage. Of course, I'm talking about the remix with Billy Ray Cyrus. Now, I really enjoy um, the vocals on this song. Billy Ray has some good country grit to his voice, and Lil Nas X isn't the most impressive, but he's definitely not the worst person I've heard on one of these songs. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at... Uh, every other Vine song with people who can't sing. So, yeah, this song's actually not bad. I actually saw his Genius interview, and he seemed to be not terrible at singing, which is kind of impressive, considering this is a meme song. I know this isn't a Vine song, but it's a TikTok song. It's basically the same thing. Now, uh, the remix of Billy Ray Cyrus, it was the whole controversy. Is this country? Is this not country? And is that fair? And honestly, country is weird. And country likes hip-hop, and they keep implementing hip-hop, and it never sounds good. This is my problem with country music, is when they, uh, implement hip-hop slang. It just never works. And yet, we have a trap song implementing country-style imagery here, and it does work. I think everyone agrees that the song works. I don't know what. But even all that aside, it's a good song. It's catchy. It's a weird goddamn song, but even all that aside, is it good enough to be number one for 12 weeks? Is this song making my year-end best list? I mean, maybe. It's not like this year's been outstanding or anything. I mean, I would argue Breathing's running away from my number one spot, but outside of that in sickle mode, I can't really think of too many things that are automatically gonna be on my best list, if you know what I mean, but... Old Town Road, it's just... I mean, it's... I might put it on my best list. I'm fairly certain I'm the only person who liked One Dance by Drake, and, um, I mean, I haven't made a best of 2016 list, actually, I probably should at some point, but the point is that it's Drake. I didn't put God's Plan on my best list last year. That song's actually kind of grown on me now that I'm not being bombarded with it. I did put Nice For What on my best list, which is the song that everyone seemed to agree was good. Now, all three of Drake's big, huge smash singles last year, you know, Nice For What, God's Plan, and in my feelings, we're all good. I will say that, but not great. Not like, except for nice. What? <laughs> not not like. Oh, I demand this song be number one. No tears left to cry is my favorite hit of last year, and that only hit number three. Now I understand chart position doesn't really matter. You can have a song that charts like at ninety something and it still makes the year end. It is still eligible for my list, obviously. But the point is that this song has a good shot at being the biggest song of the year, and uh. Honestly, the biggest song of the year usually sucks. Okay, so last year's song was God's Plan. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. What was the year before? Shape of You? I mean, that song's not terrible. It's just so lifeless. And I don't understand why anyone thought this was a good idea. I still think this song is hilariously terrible. And, uh, what was it the year before? Okay, and am I supposed to say something about this song? Like, I mean, he doesn't like his mom, but, but, uh, or, or his mom doesn't like his girlfriend, but, I, and this song isn't terrible, but, Justin Bieber is singing an acoustic guitar song. No! Actually, the song's okay, I really don't care. But I have no strong opinion on it.
Uh, so, I mean, okay, what was 2015's biggest song of the year? I mean, I'm, I'm wondering. It's not like I know it off the top of my head or anything. Um, but, I mean, these songs usually suck, right? Okay, uh, so, yeah, um, what was, what was 2015's biggest song of the year? I wonder. Oh, Uptown Funk! That's actually one of the best songs of the decade, huh? Everyone seems to agree the song's amazing, right? Like, I mean, I'm not just spitballing here. This is a song that deserved to be, uh, the, the, uh, biggest song of that year, and... Okay, what about, what about the year before that? Happy? Seriously, Happy? That was the biggest song of 2014? I mean, it could have been worse. 2014 was not a great year at all, but... But, like... Why happy? It's it's a goofy movie tie-in. So okay, oh sorry. So here's the question: Why were all of these songs hits? Going back to last year, God's Plan was a hit because Drake was the biggest artist in the world. Shape of You was a hit in 2017 because Ed Sheeran was the biggest artist in the world. Love Yourself was a big hit in 2016 because Justin Bieber was the biggest artist in the world. Uptown Funk was a hit because it deserved to be and it's a fantastic song. Amber No Mars was the biggest artist in the world. Happy was a hit because it was a tie-in soundtrack to a children's film and it was a fun song in 2013. Thrift Shop? Really? 2012, Somebody That I Used To Know. I mean, that was a hit because it's a great song. Rolling In The Deep, 2011. TikTok, 2010. Boom Boom Pow, 29. Why am I even asking the biggest song of the year? And the biggest song of 2006 was Bad Day by Daniel Powder. The biggest song of 2005 was We Belong Together by Mariah Carey. The biggest song of 2002 was How You Remind Me by Nickelback, and that's the year I was born. The biggest song of 1996 was the Macarena. Do, do you see a pattern here? These songs are not generally that good or anything. I mean, some of them are definitely deserved to be there, but... I mean, you could definitely talk about how I could spend all this set time talking about how happy sounds like Shake It Off and how music in 2014 sounded very different than music does now and that Taylor Swift is blatantly writing whatever trend is popular and that her new song sounds like any every other song. And wait, didn't I already make a video about that? The point is that... What the heck is going on? This doesn't sound like anything. I mean, yeah, face value is not really that different from any other trap song, but it's just so weird. Just... I like Lil Nas' explanation for their verses and, uh, in the chorus, especially the chorus, and the, uh, I mean, the, the, um, verses are kind of goofy. There's some, uh, juvenile word choices, for lack of a better word, but honestly, I like this song, but... Why? I have so many questions. Questions. Unfortunately, I don't think I can answer these questions. I mean, it's big off a of meme. It stuck around because it was good enough, I guess. And star power? I mean, honestly, I think the controversy and buzz is the only thing keeping the song around. But people are liking this song as a song, and I'm not really sure why the novelty hasn't worn off yet. But I mean, I, I'll take it. It's a good song. Honestly, this song is just so bizarre to me that it even exists. Now, one last thing I want to mention before I go is I love that whistling on the outro of the remix. It just feels so... I don't have a good description for it, but yeah, that I love that. It's great. Anyway, thanks for watching.